Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is Stew's News, a review of American high-speed rail happenings over the last month. In this October 2023 episode, we'll be looking at what went down during September. Let's start with Brightline and the biggest news of last month. Brightline opened its $6 billion extension from West Palm Beach to Orlando in Florida. Yes, okay, Brightline Florida is not high-speed rail. However, the new section between Coco and Orlando is certified Class 7 at 125 miles per hour, and this is the only train in the United States to travel that fast outside of the Northeast Corridor. Brightline is also a private company. It's a new paradigm, it raises the bar and throws the gauntlet in Amtrak's general direction. Speaking of that, check out this image captured at the Orlando opening event. If Brightline West is an indicator, these aspirational city pairs would likely be serviced at an average of 100 to 120 miles per hour. Not the fastest high speed rail, but a big step up from what is already present. We'll be following Brightline West here as well as keeping an eye on Brightline's 2.0 vision. Speaking of Brightline West, there was no movement from the Surface Transportation Board on requested actions from last month. However, the Federal Railroad Administration did finish a reevaluation of some proposed changes on the Victor Valley to Las Vegas portion of the Brightline West route. The mystery of the Victor Valley station renders has been solved. Brightline is now planning to run the tracks and station in the median here as well. Similarly changed is the portion of the route from State Line to about Gene, Nevada, which was previously intended to run along the east side of the freeway. This means the tracks will run in the I-15 median for all but seven of the route's 218 miles. In addition, plans for a maintenance facility in Sloan, Nevada, about 15 miles south of the Las Vegas station were revealed. For both the Victor Valley and Sloan maintenance facilities, the plan is to raise one side of the freeway over tracks between the median and the facility. We'll see if Brightline can manage to squeeze that into the $12 billion budget. Other than that, it's something of a holding pattern for Brightline West. We'll see if there's any word on STB decisions or FSP national grants next month. Let's move on to California High Speed Rail. The federal government announced Chrissy grants in September and California High Speed Rail received the single largest award, $202 million of the $1.4 billion pot. The grant will cover 80% of the cost for right-of-way acquisition and grade separations in and around the town of Shafter, California for both California High Speed Rail and BNSF. This work exists on the extension south to Bakersfield and signals the beginning of a shift away from the initial four construction packages they've been working on for eight years. All told, California got a little more than 20% of the Chrissy Grant pot. However, results like this may not continue considering the passing of California Senator Dianne Feinstein on September 29th, 2023, the day of this recording. Continuing the political bent, we have more Republican posturing with H.R. 1435, which seeks to overrule state mandates against gas-only passenger vehicles. It recently passed the House on a near-party line vote of 222 to 199. This probably won't get past the Senate, let alone the President, but I bring it up because it would maybe help California high-speed rail. Without that mandate, public transit becomes that much more important for meeting California's climate goals. Anyway, enough with politics, let's look at the Central Valley reports, since both the Finance and Audit Committee and board meetings were canceled in September. Capital outlay budget summary was looking good last month, this month not so much. $112 million expended in July, yeah that's not gonna cut it. Start of the fiscal year and off on the wrong foot. But hey, at least they're half a percentage point ahead of last year's pace. Risk contingency only down 16 million. That's real good. The longer term trend is looking good. Just a blip in June from the flooding in March. Things are going slow, but not over budget. See, I can be positive about California high-speed rail. 
CP4 earned value chart. July results are lackluster. They've left this special note since they know we're keeping an eye on it now. The package is forecast to be done by end of September, except for the parts that aren't done. I believe they're still talking about October for contractual substantial completeness or a couple months late. Since that's pretty much done, maybe we can see CPs 1, 2, and 3 done on time in 2026. Speaking of that, let's look at construction progress because I want to show you what they have done for years and continue to do. Last month, forecast for structures in July was 78, guideway 92, but look at the July report. They missed the forecast for both, but they changed the forecast so that they met it. I can't tell you how many times they've adjusted figures like this. Notice how they hit or beat every target? They're more than two years behind right now. My view is if the board wants me to believe things have changed, they need to start policing this finagling and get management to knock it off. Transparency where you have to follow the ball under the three cups in order to know the score is not transparency. All right, California High Speed Rail, get out of my sight. And I was in a good mood about you for a second too. On to Acela and the NEC. A Chrissy grant for $9 million will go to study and survey fence installation to better seal the corridor. We've talked about the new Susquehanna River bridges before. The two new fixed span bridges will replace the current 117 year old movable bridge at a cost of about $1.5 billion. The mayor of Perryville, Maryland on the east side of the bridge, along with Ameristar Rail, is proposing an alternative design. Their bridge would feature two levels, separating Amtrak and Mark slash Freight that way, and leave the existing historic bridge in place for use as a recreational trail. The proposal has been sent to various politicians and stakeholders. It looks like an interesting alternative. Let's see what happens. Looking at the monthly Amtrak numbers, performance on the NEC continues to be positive. A seller ridership was up from June, but gross revenue and earnings leveled off. NEC Regional made up for it somewhat, but overall NEC earnings were down slightly from June. 2023 NEC ridership is on track to be 90% of what it was in 2019. That year Amtrak nearly covered operating expenses across the board. Earnings start improving pretty dramatically if ridership goes above that. That's it for the NEC. Seems like we've hit a minor lull ahead of the Federal State Partnership for Passenger Rail Grant announcements. Speaking of that, Chicago Hub. Politicians across the Chicago Hub region have banded together in hopes of becoming friends of Pete. Like other groups in pursuit of FSP money, they sent the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, a cordial letter requesting consideration. What will Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg do in response? We'll find out soon. Something of a quiet month in U.S. high-speed rail news, but the concept did get some general exposure in various more technically focused publications. You know what wasn't quiet, though? Stu's boo-boos. After hiatus last month, the boo-boos are back. First one had to do with California high-speed rail and the CP4 earned value chart. I had said that it was stated during last month's board meeting that CP4 would be substantially complete by the end of September. This was incorrect. The time frame stated in the board meeting was, quote, in October. As we saw this month, it looks like that will be the case. Thanks to MB1024 for pointing out that boo-boo. In relation to the Fort Worth to Dallas high-speed rail project, I identified the coordinating agency as North County Department of Transportation. That should be North Central Texas Council of Governments. No idea how I got that so wrong, but hey, I got it right the month before, so how about we call that a half gold star? All right, all right, it's a full gold star. Thanks to Michael Jones 7927 for catching that and bringing it to my attention. That brings the gold star total to seven, silver stars at one. I guess I shouldn't have gotten cocky with that silver star. 
As always, if you find any boo-boos in this presentation or something I missed, point it out in the comments. If it's a good one, you win a prize. More Federal Railroad Administration High-Speed Rail Corridor videos coming, more High-Speed Rail City Pair videos, and of course, another Stu's News in four weeks at the end of October. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.